All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the flat bottom shuttle system, which is being made by form user Star Lord Kerman. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is, well, a system for making flat bottom shuttles, and it is pretty impressive. So let's jump right on into the space plane hangar and have a look at the parts we get. Now let's go ahead and turn on our janitor's closet mod filter just leaving on try cross section and we'll start with kind of an odd part i mean this is a mod of flat bottom shuttles but we actually have a circular command pod here in the bird command module now don't get me wrong I love this thing, it looks awesome. It actually does look like bird, but it is of course for the 1.25 meter size circular tanks. And uh, yeah, it just seems oddly placed with all these lovely flat bottom shuttle command pods. But it's still very cool. Now it is an unmanned command pod, but can hold two Kerbals inside of it. And of course, as a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, crew report, electric charge, and several small fuel tanks for liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer. And as you can see here, also has three different color variants. Now all of the parts in this mod have these same three color variants, and they are of course the uh, standard black and white here, then an orange, which which looks more gray to me, but hey, all right. And then a gray and orange, which looks more red to me, but again, still looks good. So there you go. Some lovely color variations. And again, all parts have these three. Now let's actually hit new here real quick and start with the proper flat bottom shuttle parts. And first starting with the K1 Classic, which as you can see here is a gorgeous and very sleek looking thing. Very fun. Now this is the shape of the various parts we are going to be encountering in this mod. All in all, very good looking. And uh, yeah, this one, very, very cool. Now this is a manned command pod with a minimum of one crew member to operate, maximum of three. Also does, of course, have a built-in data transmitter. It has a lifting surface. It is a reaction wheel, or has one rather. Then of course the crew report, electric charge, liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer and then those same three different color variants very fun I still don't know how that's orange but hey I'll roll with it <laughs> then the next one we have here if we just flip it around for the back kind of looks a bit duck face e to me but uh, again a very cool one this is the tri arrow command pod this one going back to being unmanned but can hold up to three as the data transmitter lifting surface reaction wheel crew report electric charge liquid fuel monopropellant and oxidizer we then have a shorter tri arrow well short and I really like that one it looks very cool very fun and again it is an unmanned command pod this time though only holding up to two but with the same data transmitter lifting service rcs reaction wheel a crew report electric charge a liquid fuel monopropellant and oxidizer all very fun and i'm leaving my personal favorite for last the cargo module and oh my god i love this thing it is beautiful <laughs> It actually kind of looks the strangest of all of them to me, but I love this so very much. Now, you'll notice we have some large slits in there, and that is because this actually does have its own built-in air intakes, which is great. Now, this is another manned command pod with a minimum of one crew member to operate, max of three. It has a data transmitter, lifting surface, reaction wheel, that air intake I mentioned, crew report, electric charge, the liquid fuel, monopropellant, oxidizer. And what's really fun about this thing thing is we have a ramp that we can open up to the interior and not only that if you need to fit something big inside you can also open the cargo door which actually lifts up that entire part of the command pod so that you can get to the interior cargo section of your shuttle and I love it it's just gorgeous. I, I love having this thing. It's just very, very cool having that bit that goes up and down, plus you got the ramp. 
All in all, it's just an awesome command pod with the colors and all of that. And let's uh, chuck this baby off though and head down to fuel tanks where we have a couple. First, we have just another basic fuel tank, but with the different color variations and goes of course nicely with that one bird cockpit holding liquid fuel and oxidizer. We then of course also have the tri-fuel short, which is a short fuel tank, which is or has rather a lifting surface and then also holds liquid fuel and oxidizer. We then have the tri-tail, which tapers off with three com uh, three different control points for adding engines. And this one again, lifting surface and holding liquid fuel and oxidizer. And then the final one of the tanks, the tri-tail two, this one having just two attachment points for the engines. And again, tapering off quite nicely. I do like the shape of it all. And again, lifting surface, liquid fuel, Oxidizer. Very good. Now, uh, next, we sadly have nothing in engines, but, I mean, we have plenty in the game already for use with this. We then have nothing in command and control, nothing in structural, nothing in coupling, but in payload! We got a couple. The first is the tri-cargo bottom. Now, this one is lifting surface with liquid fuel and oxidizer. As you can see, the tank's running along the inside. It is a nice cargo hold. And this one, if we open the doors, opens from from the bottom there. Now we also have the tri-cargo bottom short, which again, lifting surface, liquid fuel oxidizer, and the door opening from the bottom. It's just half the size of the other. But then we also have, oops, I meant to click those off. There we go, the tri-cargo top. This one has no liquid fuel and oxidizer on it. It is, does, of course, still have the lifting surface, but this one opens up from the top there and is just pure cargo capacity for you to enjoy. So there we are, lovely. Now next in our dynamics, we have quite a selection of things. I'm actually gonna zoom out a bit. We have a couple of wings for you to use. Now these uh, start with the curved wing right here. Very fun for your smaller body shuttles. Very nice, it fits flush with the whole system and just looks darn good. As you can see, it already comes with both wings and it'll click in between different modules. So say if I go back to the uh, payload there, we can then just continue to build from that point which is very useful. Now, we then also have the tri-shuttle wing, which isn't quite as curved. It's nice and straight, very good looking, and has attachment points on the back for different fins. You can see the attachment point right there. We then also have a single small wing, which, you know, works like a normal wing where you can use the uh, symmetry to get it on both sides and has a built-in flap right there and then finally we have the tri-wing heavy oh my god i love this one it's gigantic and does have four different points right there that you can see to install flaps on this thing and uh like with the other wings i didn't mention it but i wanted to go through the wings first each of them is a well a lifting surface it's a wing and then also holds liquid fuel and oxidizer on the interior for all four of those, which is very good to have. And, you know, realistic. Wings in real life on planes do hold fuel. Now then, oh, actually, I probably, probably should have kept that out for showing off our various uh, different uh, flaps that we do have. Now, we have uh, different ones here attaching with different ones of the wings, but basically they all function the same. You have left and right elements of them to attach into these pre-sized slots, and you just go for the left, and then, of course, the right over here. There we go, etc. Each of them, again, as I said, fitting with the different wing designs, which is very handy. So we're not going to go through all of them. They just kind of click in to where they need to go. Now let's move on. Nothing in ground, nothing in thermal, nothing in electrical or communication or science. But the last part that we do have is here in utility, where we have the tri-crew module, which is a lifting surface as usual in this mod. It does also have liquid fuel and oxidizer and can hold two kerbals on the interior. It's just a nice little crew module there for you to hold a few extra kerbals 
on your missions. And yeah, those are all the parts for the flat bottom shuttle system. They are pretty impressive, and I've been having a lot of fun with this whole design so far. It's just, you have a lot of different parts in here to build some pretty, pretty darn cool things. So let's actually first load up, uh, oh, actually, no, we actually need to leave. I already have it out on the runway. I've set up a uh, little craft with all of the different uh, command pods to show the interiors, because most of them most of them have interiors. Sadly, some do not, but uh, we can actually show that off here real quick. If we go with the interior overlay, you'll notice we have one on the bird command module, the cargo module, the tri-arrow short, the tri-arrow command module, and uh, sadly, we don't have an interior on the K1 Classic or the Tri-Crew. So those two are currently missing interiors. Hopefully those will be added in the future, but for now we do have them on at least these four. So let's take an interior view, and uh, you'll notice we have the roster prop monitor things up here, and that of course does mean that roster prop monitor is used in this mod. Uh, other than that, pretty sparse cockpit for the time being. Again, hopefully that does improve with time, but still it is quite nice to have a cockpit for especially the cargo module one like i said i really really love this thing and it just it feels like you're in a cargo ship in here it's glorious and of course it has three seats the center seat the left seat and the right seat there which is very good we then have i believe this is the tri short i'm not remembering but another fun little uh, command pod here with uh, this crew member seat, this crew member seat, and then a rear crew member seat over here. And then uh, this one is the, I believe this is the short. This is the short, the other one was, oh god, I don't remember now. But yes, another nice interior, nice interior here, with no back seat in that one. And we now have the bird command module with the just awesome giant circular windows there. A bit more cramped compared to the others, but there we go with the two different seats there. Very nice. So which ones was that? So yeah, so we had the, the tri-short was the third, so this was the first one. The second was the tri-arrow, and then the tri-arrow short. There we are. Yes. And uh, yeah, just wonderful to have all those. Now let's turn off the overlay real quick and watch the animation on the cargo module. Just cause, well, it does go quick in the... Uh space plane hangar. So we have the ramp there, and then the cargo door opening up there. Again, I just, I love that so much. And with those cargo bays, you can fit quite a lot in those things. So you could use it to take supplies or rovers to wherever you need in the system, which is pretty cool. Now let's actually uh, revert this flight. Oh, no, not to launch. I forgot I launched that before we started. Let's go back to the space center clear that off the runway and actually load up a ship that I made earlier which I haven't actually flown yet so I don't know if it's gonna work but we'll see we'll see I of course made a heavy cargo shuttle which is quite stumpy but uh, it's it's definitely wider than it is long and uh, yeah it's it's an odd one <laughs> <laughs> For some reason, I decided to go with ram or turbo ram jets on it rather than like a rocket engine and took out all the oxidizer. Don't know why. Probably would be better to do this with uh, proper rocket engines. But yeah, yeah, here's an example of what you could make. Just a gigantic freaking cargo plane. Let's see if this thing actually works. I have no clue. <laughs> oh, I probably should have tested this before starting, but oh well. That's half the fun, just letting it go and seeing how it turns out. So far, we're flying straight. No, never mind, we're turning, we're turning. Oh, I, I designed this poorly. I, and we're dead, we're dead, we're dead. Well, see, this is why you should test things before you start. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Eh, there we go, there we go. Now we can get the cargo out. <laughs> oh boy, you know, you know, I really want that thing to fly at least a little bit, so let's let's revert flight to launch and use hyper edit to at least get it in the air. 
I must have one of the landing gear just very, very wonky. Oh, yeah, they do look a little bit wonky, don't they? All right, well, let's uh, throttle up, open up the ship lander, and let's just... Oh, let's... Uh, current location, and then select right here, eh, 2,500 feet, and land, and drop. And then let's start up our engines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and there's my Alexa going off. Somehow I set it off there. But uh, there we are. We are uncontrollably falling back to the planet, but maybe we can recover. I did give us quite a lot of uh, space to hopefully recover. There we go. There we go. And we're doing it. It flies! <laughs> Kind of poorly, but it flies. <laughs> All right, yeah, there we are. That is the flat bottom shuttle system with some very cool parts, allowing you to make some pretty awesome looking crafts, whether it's a gigantic, awkward cargo plane, which you could most certainly build one better than me, or, you know, an actual proper shuttle. You can have quite a bit of fun with this particular set of parts. So if you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I would certainly recommend you go and do. You can have a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that is going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed. And, of course, that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful parts mod. But until that time, thank you for watching. And, as always, have a good one!